everyone. Some mixed media goodness today. Some mixed media madness. So I've got a 12 by 12 page and I'm just digging into some dilutions. I was looking at my colours in my bag here and I thought, ooh, grey and green might be some good colours to, to move along with here. So I'm using my Katie Mixed Media stencil for this week and this is what I created. So just using my spatula here to put on some grey paint side to side and I'm thinking, oh, this will be nice and clean. Let me just do this and I start blow drying and I had the brilliant idea, well, or maybe not so brilliant, who knows, to add some water and make it run down the page Filling in that bottom part as well, I'm not making it so white, which I've done for other pages, but for this one I just felt like it needed to go everywhere, maybe because it was mixed media. And mixed media madness, it does go everywhere. <laughs> so just using my um, just clear water in a spritz bottle and pushing it down, making it move with the page. I also make it move with the blow the heat tool. And I don't know why I did that. I wiped it off. I think because it was so wet and I didn't want more drips. But then I also did want more drips. I don't know what I was thinking. But as per usual, you can just cover it up because it's fun stuff. Now, did I just replay that same? No. Surely not. <clears throat> so just manipulating it there with the spatula a little bit. Cleaning up underneath. I used probably a million wipes and I thought it's not as thick as I would have liked so I'm adding some more dilutions paint. The good thing about dilutions is it's nice, it's thick but not too thick, it's not like really heavy thick paint and it go a little goes a long way. So these bottles are going to last for a while. So just drying for a bit and then I'm just at the end there getting up some of the extra blobs just putting my photo there just for some context to make sure it's enough and that's what I was thinking and where I'm going to put the stencil. So here's the stencil for this month and this month, this week. And just put in some green. I'm using a makeup sponge. I put some, dipped it in the paint, then put it on my table or you could put it on your craft mat if that's what you're using. Just and like pushing it down to blend it out so that it's not just full of paint. And then I'm just tapping it on through the stencil. So this is instead of using those dabbers that everyone's got, or those Tim Holtz or, um, you know, those other kind of brands that you can get. Because these I just got from Target. You can get them from Kmart. They're quite cheap. And they do the job brilliantly. you just got to know that little technique. Or net technique. So make sure you clean your stencils because you don't want it to become nice and thick and not lay on the page properly. Just putting that photo again to make sure this is where I wanted to put the things. So now I'm just going to use the stencil and put some white modelling paste through just because I thought it needed some dimension. Even though it's nice, it's thin. Um, it's not a thick layer of modelling paste or anything. So around it goes, just using my spatula again. So you could pretty much get away with mixed media by getting some paint. And you can get, I've got plenty of paint just from, excuse me, the $2 shop from Kmart and stuff as well. Some paint, a spatula, a stencil and a makeup sponge. And if you want, some um, modelling paste. Five things and you've got an awesome layout. So one of the tricks I do with this um, cleaning the stencils, I put the wipe down on the bottom, put the stencil on top and then wipe with another wipe to clear it off and then flip it over. That way it gets it off while you're cleaning. It cleans both sides really nicely. And that's what I was doing to the side there, but it might have been a bit tricky to see. So I got out my paintbrush and I'm using some of the paint just to dot some dots on, but also to draw some circles that are open in the middle. Just to add some to kind of like doodly, doodly doodles on the page. So doodling to make it look pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. I've got tickets on myself. To make it look like it's got dimensions, it's got layers and it fits all connects together. So on it goes. Here, there, everywhere. Just randomly. Not really thinking too much about it because it's all... 
the good thing about mixed media pages is that you can just go wild and it, as long as you've got you know a pattern or a color combination that's working it can pretty much look like anything and it will work and the also the other good thing about mixed media pages is that you could not like something way something's going but then you can continue cover it up change it up add something different and voila it's a totally different page that you love so I've just got a f two photos here I'd printed them on the four by six cut them in half so I could overlap them and lay it like that just gonna that's a white paper bag that's what I'm gonna use for my layering pieces but so this photo is when my son had a, a pretty bad bike accident and he'd uh, pretty much broken the, most of his front teeth oh just wait so this is cool so this is a piece of muslin which actually came from the dentist but you can get muslin from you know like your first aid kit but also from the, um, the sewing shop and I'm just using some distress ink or some spray stain whatever you want to call it the colors in the spray bottles and just putting it straight on there adding some extra water and mixing around to give it that color that's going to go in nicely to the background otherwise I would have just had white on white which works for sometimes but I didn't think it would work for this one so just layering up on my paper bag here going to cut the bottom rip the side then realize oh I could rip the other side and layer it up and awesome that's pretty much as simple as you have to be you don't have to get all technical when you when you're putting your photo down in your embellishments so on we go adding the muslin behind there not making it neat making it look really grungy and nice adding some staples because it's the easiest way to put it on there and it gives another different um, texture to the page glue it down sticky stick and look look how great that's looking already and there's barely anything other than the background on this page so this washi came from studio 14 that unfortunately is closed but it was the perfect green as well so adding some more shades of green I just fishtailed both ends of that banner and I put it there and then I thought hmm that just looks like it's there for nothing so better put something on top of it perhaps that could go where my that could be my title so look through my phrase thickers and I found this little Heidi swap I'm pretty sure it's Heidi swap packet of words so they're just die cuts on white pieces of paper and I thought I could make this work adding some more of the gray by using a lead pencil to messily color it in and how simple is that little cheat little um, you know budget kind of a tip changing it up just by using a lead pencil on it goes not much more to the page although there is in the same respect there's not like it doesn't look like there's heaps because I'm not embellishing actually I don't think I put any embellishments on there except for that washi tape because it's all layering and the mixed media background oh that's so cool so I'm using some of the color spray that I'd use on the muslin and I'm just using the lid to dip it in and make some circles that are not complete so it looks really um, grungy again and I'm just using it to flick it on there because I figured that's it could make flicks and then it will work but then I thought better get that paintbrush out add some extra water to thin it out and put it around flicking it dotting it putting it purposely in places mushing it on here because I've seen up the top there I've got this line of green from the from the stencil so adding that other green in there too tying it all in and I figured that could be a spot for some journaling so as I was saying before this photo is when my son had a, a nasty accident after falling off his bike and pretty much ruined his front teeth well he didn't ruin them he's still got them he broke them off but then had to so he's got permanent fillings on these teeth now and this is why we're waiting in the waiting room for the endodologist which is um, for when you got trauma to your teeth and he is getting to the age where he does not want photos to occur so I need to be a bit sneaky and then he does things like this where he puts his hand up on his face and he thinks that I'm not going to use the photo so just using the pencil to write my journaling down the bottom but also to draw some squiggly lines everywhere and trying to just make it look 
edgy, I think, is what I was, you know, but also just make it all tie in, adding some extra texture and layer and depth to it. So I actually rub out some of the journaling because I wrote Grow Up, but I was thinking, you know, I was going to write a lot of lengthy journaling and then I figured I didn't want to at all. So getting out some ink now, using the dauber to, to sprinkle it on, to drop it on and enjoy the that brightness and one of them I make when I lift it up I actually make it go down the page so thanks for watching I'll see you next time